Hey everyone, welcome back to my series on Terraform Basics. In today's episode, we'll be diving into resource blocks. These are the most important configuration block type in Terraform. Otherwise, you wouldn't have any resources to manage. So let's jump right in. This video builds on my previous video about the fundamentals of the configuration block in Terraform. If you haven't watched that video, you might want to, as it explains the basics of block syntax in the HashiCorp configuration language. Resource blocks are one of many configuration block types, and like I said in the introduction, they are arguably the most important block type. After all, if Terraform couldn't express resource configurations, it wouldn't be very useful, now would it? Resource blocks follow the simple syntax of the resource keyword to start the block, followed by two block labels. The first block label is the resource type as defined by the provider. The second block label is the resource name. Put together, the resource type and the name label form the unique identifier of the resource in the configuration. Inside of the curly braces will be a set of arguments in the form of identifier and expression pairs, and possibly some nested blocks. The supported arguments and nested blocks are defined by the resource type, but there are a set of meta arguments that are common to all resources, which we'll touch on later. For now, let's get into resource types. Provider plugins are how Terraform talks to infrastructure services. You could think of a provider plugin as a translator between resources that are defined by the services API and the resources and data sources that are defined for Terraform on the other side. Providers are made up of one or more resources and data sources. We're going to put the focus on just resources for this video, but don't worry, data sources will get their moment in the spotlight at a later time. If you look at a resource in the documentation, it lists the required and optional arguments that can go in the block and supported nested blocks and the attributes that are exported by the managed resource. If we look at a resource type, you'll notice that the type starts with the name of the provider followed by an underscore and then the actual resource type in that provider. So for example, we have Azure RM virtual network as a resource type. Terraform uses the beginning of the resource type to infer which provider plugin supports it. Even if you don't define a provider block or list a required provider, Terraform will try and figure it out based on the resource type. That lowers the amount of friction necessary to get started with Terraform, but it also conceals the complexity that you'll need to learn about later. I covered this in more detail in my video on provider plugins, but suffice to say that you should always define required providers in the Terraform block and create a provider block for each instance of the provider. The second block label is the name label. The name should be descriptive of the resource and not simply a repeat of the resource type. For instance, we don't use VNet as the name label for an Azure RM virtual network. We already know that it's a virtual network. So what is the VNet for? Is it an application virtual network or a shared virtual network? You can use the name label to describe that aspect of the virtual network, or you can use a common name label for all resources in the configuration to make it easy to remember when referencing it later on in the config. The combination of the resource type and the name label must be unique within the configuration. That's because the two together form the unique identifier for the resource. When I want to reference the name of a resource group for my virtual network, the identifier will be Azure RM resource group dot web app and the attribute I want to retrieve, which in this case is the name attribute. Two different resource types can use the same name label, and sometimes that's preferred to express that they are related. If we have a network interface, virtual machine, and network security group that are all for the database, then you might want to use the name label DB for each one. If you do happen to have two resources of the same type with the same name label, Terraform will throw an error when it tries to validate the configuration. 
it will simply not perform an initialization, plan, or apply action while that error persists. While most arguments are defined by the resource type, there is a set of arguments available to all resources, called meta-arguments. These arguments tell Terraform how to manage the resource, and are not passed up to the service API behind the provider plugin. Here's a quick list of the resource meta-arguments. Count is used to create multiple instances of a resource based off an integer value. For each is used to create multiple instances of a resource based off of a map or set. Depends on is a list of other objects in the configuration that this resource is dependent on for creation or destruction. Provider lists out the provider instance that should manage this resource. It defaults to the unaliased instance of the provider. Lifecycle controls the lifecycle of the resource, such as create before destroy or prevent destroy. Now, each of these meta arguments are a basics video unto itself. So think of this as planting the seed for future videos and not an exhaustive examination of meta arguments. The resource block is what lets Terraform manage different resource types defined in a provider plugin. The format of the block is the keyword resource, the resource type, and the name label. Inside the block will be a set of required and optional arguments and nested blocks as defined by the resource type. There are also meta arguments available to all resources. You can reference a resource elsewhere in the configuration with the syntax resource type, name label, and optionally the resource attribute you want to retrieve. That will do it for resource blocks. Thank you for watching. If you found this video helpful, don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel. And as always, feel free to leave any questions or comments down below. If you're looking for something to watch next, check out the next video in the Terraform Basics series that should appear somewhere around here. Until next time, stay healthy, stay safe out there. Bye for now.